and welcome to the What's in My Pack video. And don't, don't mind my lovely assistants that will occasionally jump up behind me. <laughs> so it's a weird day in the desert today. It's uh, overcast, it's still warm, but we actually had a little bit of rain, which never usually happens in May. May usually is in the triple digits. We're not there, but I'm not complaining. Um, so let's start with what's in my pack. Um, I'll actually start with some of the things that I threw out that I uh, got rid of on shakedowns or didn't bring back my second time out. So that's, that's in this box. I actually sent home a bunch of stuff from uh, uh, Scout and Frodo's. Um, I was trying to do an, an additional sit pad. This is more of a, this is the Gossamer Gear Thin Light. It's like one, one eighth of an inch. And I was using that as a sit pad, but it's, it's very, um, what do I want to say? It's, it's, it's thin and, and fragile. Um, so instead, I thought, I'm going to go with one of these things. They're cheap. You can get them on Amazon for relatively cheap. Um, this particular brand is called a Jungle Leopard. And it's under two ounces. I forgot exactly how much, but I decided the last minute, I'm like, you know what? It's almost, it, no, I don't need an additional weight. I kept like, adding little things. So my base weight went up to 17 pounds. And for those of you who don't know, a base weight is basically the weight of your backpack and your equipment without food and water and without the clothes that you're actually wearing on your person. So I'm like, no, you know what, I'm just creeping up. So I, I that didn't even make it in my backpack when I was telling you the Scout and Frodo's. Um, then I did a shakedown at Scout and Frodo's and ended up sending some stuff home. I had, I was like, stuff sack galore. I had stuff sacks for everything. and. It's good for organization, but I had too many stuff sacks. So we got rid of this big Mondo one. We didn't need that. We combined what what else I had in other little stuff sacks. Um, and then, gosh, I think I had this from my GoPro. We got rid of that and went with one of the smaller. Um, it was the, uh, not the cover, but it's a thing my little blow up pillow came in. It fit better in that. So, and, the, and that was lighter than this. So we got rid of this. Uh, got rid of this temporarily. I don't know why I still have this in my backpack. It's a bug net. Won't need this until, um, you know, bug season up in the Sierra. So I don't know why this didn't just go in the resupply box, but this was still in my backpack. So we got rid of that, sent it home. Um, this was the big one. This weighs, I think, like 12 ounces, if not more. These are tights. I thought I was perhaps going to hike in them, definitely going to sleep in them but I learned that they weren't warm enough to sleep in, so I bought a pair of cuddle beds instead, um, the, which are fleece. And, but yet I still have this in my backpack. Um, they're like, you don't need this and that. So we sent this home and I never once missed these. So this was definitely a good one to get rid of, <laughs> definitely. I had extra paracord because I thought maybe my paracord would break on my tent. No, never needed it. Glad I got rid of it and sent it home. And <laughs> the cats are being silly. Um, this is a stand for my jet boil. Never missed it. Got rid of that. All these are just an ounce here, an ounce here, uh, or more. Um, have a carabiner because I love carabiners, but I had too many, so we sent that one. Um, I actually went and bought this. Um, and I, never, I never did miss it. And it is heavy, so I'm glad I sent that home. This was like an additional sack for my uh, something for my tent that I didn't need. Um, um, tent pole splints, sent that one home. Another little carabiner, sent that home. And that's all I sent home from Scout the Frodo. And then when I came home with an injury, um, I, I never once used my GoPro during the entire hike. Never missed it, just used my phone to video. And this is heavy, so I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna bring this back out. So I actually ditched this when I came back home, intentionally. This I forgot to bring, but oh well. <laughs> this I usually wear anyways, but uh, yeah. But so that's the stuff that I ditched, and I shaved quite a few ounces off, or definitely a pound, perhaps even more. Never missed anything that I sent home at all. Uh, the one thing I did send home I regretted sending home were these little rubber bands that went around my, my tent poles. And uh, when I came home, I grabbed them out of the box and used them. <laughs> but there any more to start? Let's start with what I wore, which does not 
it's not technically in my pack, but it's still part of the gear that I use for the hike. I will bring in all this stuff over here. Start with this. Okay. So, of course, you know the hat. Cheap little hat that I picked up at Walmart at some point. I was like, eh. Hmm. Um, doesn't have a super wide brim, but it was wide enough to keep this on off my face, and I, I, I really needed that. Um, a lot of people were like, why don't you bring an umbrella? I really rely on my trekking poles, and I don't know exactly how to secure it, where you don't have to have hands on all the time. And I was very obsessed with weight, so I thought, I don't need the umbrella. And for the most part, it didn't, but there were a few days, as you saw, that I probably could have been well served by an umbrella. It may be something I try in the future, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, then we got my sun shirt. I wore this, I wore usually a short sleeve, which is in there, but um, I wore this a lot of the time too. This is, um, you can roll this up. This is a, one of those Columbia sun shirts, silver red shirts, and really are awesome. It's pretty sturdy too. For that, I wore convertible pants, which generally I wore shorts. Right now they're in shorts form. I started with a pair of uh, Columbia's, um, and they they were a little bit too big for me when I came home at the first time. So I moved to these REI co-op ones, which are a size lower, and uh, they fit they fit really nicely. And the the actual light parts in here too somewhere. Uh, I have my darn tough socks. I never I did not wear liners. I didn't wear gingies of any sort. Uh, I do want to have my shoes with me. Um, I, I wear, for shoes I wore the um, uh, King Voyagers. They're hiking shoes. Um, they're breathable, but they're not tennis shoes. Um, they're not like the trail runners. They are, um, they're kind of a hybrid between a trail runner and a boot, but they're not a boot. They're not high rise or anything like that. And uh, they're breathable enough where, yes, my foot still sweat because I'm in the desert hiking, these are really good about wicking moisture away from my feet, even though they're, they're still a little bit wet. I just tried to remember every time I took a long break to take out my shot socks and shoes to air them out and dry them out a little bit. These are not the thin ones. They're like the uh, the padded hiking versions. Um, so they're a little bit thicker, which people are like, why would you wear that in the desert? Because it's just good on my feet. And I never got a blister. Yeah, I did get an impact problem with one of my toenails, but I never got but definitely had the right shoes for me. Um, got some gloves. I started with gray ones, which are somewhere in the house, and then I grabbed these on the way out the second time. Um, where I wore men's briefs because I had the P-style and I wanted easy access <laughs> when I needed to use the P-style. So I got these little six-inch boxer briefs. They were, they were nice. They were moisture wicking, so it worked fine. I uh, have my Dirty Girl Gators, courtesy of Chubby Hiker, and courtesy of Brian, who's actually in the house. Um, he was off for summer for, the, for school, for college. There's a cat right now sniffing the bottom of the um, camera. Please don't knock the camera over. That would be Kuga, please. <laughs> He's skittish, so I'm not going to frighten him too much. But this, um, this material is awesome. You get it wet. Ring it out, slap it, and there's some kind of crystals in here. It makes it ice cold, and this saved my hide so many times on those warm days. Totally appreciate it once it can buy a break. I also forgot my little wallet that I brought. It's a hyperlight wallet. Hey, look, I still have the tan lines. Um, super lightweight, and it was like perfect because I usually have a leather wallet. It's way too heavy, and this thing was perfect. Kept everything I needed, pretty secure. Now I'm going to start with what's actually in my pack, and I've uh, not unpack things except for what I've shown you already because I wanted to give a true indication of what's in there. <laughs> the cats are distracting me, sorry. We'll start with what's in pockets. Um, we'll start with one of the little side fit pockets. I'm old fashioned. I actually like to carry paper maps as well as using debt hooks. And in hindsight, I did use it. Usually I use them in camp. I never used them when I was on the walk, walking, hiking. Um, let's see, I was ready to go. Section B, <laughs> page number one. 
Um, I'm still looking at the weather. If the weather, right now it's raining like crazy over there too. If the weather doesn't get bad, and too, what I mean by that is too hot or too much rain here. Um, I've got one more window of time that I could possibly go out there if I can talk some people into giving me a ride to me um, for next weekend, but I have to watch the weather. If the weather doesn't work, and then it's not going to happen this year. Um, if I do go out there, it would only be between, I'd only take the leg of section B between Warner Springs and Paradise Valley Cafe, which is like three days, maybe four because of my, uh, my, my speed. But anyways, I'm getting distracted. A map is in one pocket. I usually will have at least one electrolyte in one of those pockets too. Um, so I can pour this in the water and I felt better every time I did that, I swear. Uh, I also have some, uh, suntan lotion in that pocket. And in this particular pocket I had, oh gosh, there's still some in there, sorry. But these are my cat's ashes, uh, Miss Kitty's ashes that died about two, two and a half years ago. And throughout the hike I was finding really beautiful spots to spread her. Um, I also have a uh, knife. It was mostly for you know, cutting open packages or you know slicing off a slice of cheese, things like that. But I did make sure it was in my pocket the one time I hitchhiked. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> right, this one pocket. The other pocket is empty right now. I usually keep, keep snacks in that. My food, the stuff I'd be eating while, my, while I was hiking. I have a little, whoa, shoulder pack or shoulder pocket here. I would, uh, at times, I'd keep my phone in there. Um, I'd also keep stuff that I'm using to shoot right now, which is the holder for my phone, and I have a little gorilla pod that I either keep in there or one of the side pockets. Uh, I have this stick pick, which I didn't use, and in hindsight I thought about that. I did not use this once. Should have. It actually, it's, it makes for a really steady cam selfie shot, but I totally forgot about doing that. Um, I also have this. This is a remote control. I forgot how far it is, but you can take pictures of yourself if you're alone um, after you set up your camera. And I did use this on that leg from uh, Barrel Springs to Warner Springs a few times. The other front pocket I had is something I bought off Justin Newell. Uh, it's a little thing to hold a smart water, smart water bottle, and I bought the size for the liter. Um, I have this attached too to the front. It's my uh, Garmin inReach. And side pockets. Usually, side pockets were relegated to my tent poles and two one liter bottles on each side, if I was carrying that much. I actually have a one liter bottle right here. I totally forgot about um, No, nope, that was it. So I'm wondering, sorry, a bit awkward. This looks pretty clean. This may have actually been, I don't think that was filtered water. That's too clean. <laughs> Next is what's in the back. Okay. Little Okay, so what's in here? This is actually the, the Sawyer filter I started with, the Sawyer Mini. And it was slow from the get-go. It never slowed down. You know, people always say, oh, you have to backflush. But it never slowed down. It was just always slow. So I, I actually, when I came home, switched to uh, the bigger size, which is in here somewhere, too. Um, this is my, my glasses case for protection. So I could put this in there when I needed to. But I also kept my prescription sunglasses in there too, so I could swap out. They were always protected. And uh, everyone, they're like, you don't need that. I'm like, it's prescription. You do need that. Because if I break the prescription glasses, you know, I mean, there's duct tape. There's always duct tape, but yeah. So I can't yeah, hold on to this. And I'm glad I did. All right, we've got, oh, the, yeah, this is the pack cover that keeps the outside of the pack nice and dry, but it doesn't do anything between you and it. So in hindsight, I would highly recommend a poncho um, rather than a pack cover and, and yeah, but, but you know all about that. All right, let's keep digging. Okay, this is, this is kind of my ditty bag. This is my wet wipes. This is the um, TP, unused, don't worry. Um, this is a, a snow stake, but I also use it like the Deuce of Spades to dig 
a cat hole when needed. Um, and then also if I was in like a windy situation, it would serve as an extra tent stake that would be very handy. My uh, pea style's in there. I have a little bottle of wilderness wash. I didn't wash really, I didn't use it while on the trail because water was too scarce. Um, but I did use it several times in town when I stayed someplace and they didn't have soap. Um, I would use it. I, would, I used this for a shampoo a couple of times. I used this for, um, <laughs> I got another cat climbing up this pit. No, no. <laughs> I used this to wash my clothes a couple of times in the sink. So I definitely got my use out of that. I was looking for a smaller bottle, but I couldn't seem to find it. So it's, I would have been fine with like a quarter of that much, if, if maybe even less. This is also the bag that I had an extra gallon bag inside to put trash in. So I would double seal that. And then when I get into town or someplace where I can dump my trash, I dump the trash. This is, uh, oh, there's some extras. Ah. So this is my, um, my headlamp. I would always keep out here just for easy access. And the Petzl, the Bindi is nice because it twists around so it you can't hopefully accidentally turn it on. I also kept my cold weather gloves on the outside of that. Um, I think I only used these once or twice, but man, when you need them in the desert, you need them in the desert. And here's the, uh, the Sawyer I moved up to. This is the regular size Sawyer. They have a new product that's even smaller than the Mini that has the same flow as this. I just don't have it. But, and this, this thing is a trooper, my knock bladder. It's, it was so clean when I started, now it's like this weird color. Um, I would use this as my dirty bag to collect water, and then I would filter it into the water bottles. Um, some people will just put their water, their, their, the dirty water into the water bottles and just move this around and drink out of it, but I, I, I like the system of, you could grab any of those bottles and drink from them at any time. So I just, I filtered first sealed the bottles, and that was that. But this is, oh, the cats are in a fight right now. <laughs> oh boy, entertainment. Um, but yeah, this thing was a true word, never leaked on me. And a lot of people will <laughs> complain that it does, it's just, you have to make sure to, uh, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? You have to make sure to fold it one way and one way only. If you fold it this way and try to shove this over that, it will leak. If you fill it this way, you see the threads, and it will not leak on you. Uh, but yeah, I, th this really came in handy. And, and in a pinch, if I needed to, I could have filled this up and had extra water and filtered. But it would have been like another two liter capacity if I was desperate enough for that. But yeah, these things are awesome. And the wide mouth, it makes it so much easier to collect. You don't need a scoop to collect water on the low flows. You just kind of put that in there and bend it. Of course, you've got the top. This is the Gossamer Gear Thin Light. Like I said, one eighth of an inch. I use this as a sit pad. I just like doubled it. Um, the only thing you have to make sure to do if you're using it that way is to pick off the little stickers that might get in there. Um, because if you if you use it as I also did, as in, I put it on the floor of my tent as an extra layer before I put my uh, sleeping pad, my inflatable sleeping pad. So you have to make sure that the stickers are gone because they could possibly poke a hole in the pad. Um, and for the most part, it's easy to do. But I was starting to get like, there's a tear right there. And so this thing would have been shredded by the time I finished, if it even made it that long. But it's super light. Now let's pull out what's in my pack. So for the sake of pulling things out easily, I'm gonna put this on the ground. Sorry. Cats are so skittish. Anyways, so usually on the, this is for the most part is packed the way I packed it. Uh, I got a little bit more efficient at it as time went on. Um, not exact, but it, it's close. So the first thing on the layer, usually, um, if it wasn't my camp shoes or like a jacket, would be my uh, food bag, which is empty right now, but it's never this empty. This is a Leva Z Pack food bag. And you can use it to hang too if you want to, but I just use it as like a, an extra layer. I put food in the op sack, which is um, odor proof, and uh, zip this up, put this in the food bag, and, 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 
other. And I actually put my food in my tent every night, um, which is risking rodents, but never had any problems with it at all during the time I was out there. And it's, yeah, I think it's a great, great system because I can't smell it when, it when it's packed in this. Um, but I know animals have much better snoops than mine than I do. <laughs> then these are my camp shoes. These are Ofos. They're very, they're recovery shoes. They are not good for water crossings, um, which I, I found out once when I was trying to shower grip. If you, unless you want to bust an ankle because you slide like that right out of these things. They're not good for water crossings. What they are good for is when you can't walk at the end of the day because your, your feet are killing you for some reason. You slip these on, you can actually function almost normally. Um, I really love these things. I, I saw one other hiker out there with them, uh, but they're not water crossing shoes. I have to emphasize that. Um, then I'll have like layers of clothes, not many. Like here's um, my pant legs for my convertible shorts. Uh, here's the rain jacket that failed me uh, that second day at Warner Springs. Completely and utterly failed me. Um, I was actually wet through patches on this thing. Not where it was leaking, it was just random spots. So this is not that old and it's not been used that much. So unfortunately I'm not going to use this again because why? Um, and it's pretty heavy too. It's a little bit big for me. Um, but oh well, live and learn. So I'm going to do the poncho system, but I do have another rain jacket. Um, it just, I, this one doesn't fit me quite yet. It does, but it's snug. Because I was planning to move into this after I lost some weight on the trail, which by the way I did. Um, I lost like eight pounds in the two weeks I was out there, but I lost, I don't know how many inches I lost. I definitely went down a size in the pants and close to a size in shirts because all of a sudden my shirts were fitting a lot looser too. Um, this is a, an older OR Helium hybrid and I was going to try this for a rain jacket after, you know, after a little bit longer, but it fits very tight right now, a little bit tight, <laughs> tighter than you want it to be. But I don't know if this would fail too, but I have it ready to go someday when I I continue to lose weight. I've been trying to go to the gym when I'm not going hiking, but the gym is so boring. Um, but maybe this will work better, especially if I combine it with a poncho system. We'll see what happens. I've got it. I'm not getting rid of this one. Um, this was a, I always had a short sleeve t shirt too in there. Um, this is what I moved to after I dropped some weight. This was a, another OR outdoor research moisture wicking shirt. Really nice shirt. Um, this one is prone to snagging now. I knew there was a few snags happening before I was using like some kind of Columbia moisture wicking shirt. Did not, mo did not wick moisture as well as this did. Or the silver red shirt though, I will say that. Um, next thing I have in there, it's kind of tucked down, is my puppy. This, I never hiked in it because I didn't want to get it sweaty. Um, but I did every time I uh, stopped and it was really cold or went I was at camp and started to set up and started to get cold, I put this on. Because it's nothing like a warm down puppy to keep warm, which is pretty crazy. Um, then I've got my tent. Um, this is a, something fell, this is a big Agnes Pepper Spur UL1. Um, I still love the tent. It's a little bit snug. I mean, I fit fine in it, but I want to, I want to pull the backpack in with me. There's no way to do that in this tent at all. Um, in hindsight, maybe UL2 would have worked, but that would have been too heavy. Um, I like the uh, Tiger Wall. It's a semi freestanding, and it's the UL2 of that weighs like a hair less than this. So if I ever do change tents, which this is fine, um, I would move to that. Um, I like freestanding or semi freestanding, even though I do use trekking poles, which I don't have my trekking poles out. Oh, you know I use them. Um, but yeah. I, I love this tent. Other than I wish just a little bit bigger. <laughs> Same way, a little bit bigger. Um, the trekking poles I use are Lucky uh, Cressidas, I believe, are my newer uh, Luckies. Love my Luckies. They save me. Everyone, there's a question going around Facebook. Um, somebody asked on the PCT class of 2019, how long did you go before you fell? And everyone's like, oh, I fell on the first day, or I fell 
around mile 100 or et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, I did not fall. I came close so many times. In fact, one time I was on a ridge line and there was a big, um, it, was, it was like a Choya cactus, I believe, um, like right there on the ridge before, you know, there was a sheer drop and I tripped and I almost went right to that cactus and then off the cliff. Um, but, <laughs> sorry mom, but I had my trekking poles and my trekking poles saved me from face planting so many times, so many times. Um, I'm sure it would have happened anyways at some point, but yeah. So this is my first uh, stuff sack that I did keep. This one in particular has all my, uh, you know, like, um, I guess you could call it a ditty bag. It has like my floss, my, uh, let's open it and show you. That's what this video is about. These are like lens wipes for my glasses and my camera. Got more lens wipes, floss. Uh, this is a little hairbrush mirror combination. Toothbrush, toothpaste, body glide. Uh, this is a, like a gum pick, which I did not need to use, but man, if you need to use it, you need this bad leg. So I just kept one around. And then I added this in Mount Laguna when I started having the problems with my toenails. Uh, with the ingrown, I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I'm gonna use this, and it helps. It did help a little bit. I didn't quite like, get rid of the infection, but how do you get rid of that? You just have to stay clean for a long period of time. So that's one of the things. I have another bag. This is mostly like first aid in this one. I've got a little baggie that has uh, uh, Q-tips. That's like ibuprofen and, and uh, Tylenol, a couple of tums. I have some allergy pills in there. Um, trying to look at the little baggies. That's like Neosporin. Uh, like, like, like a sting wipe, things like that are in that little one. Uh, had a couple of these just in case it got really cold. And there was one night where I probably should have used these and I didn't even remember to use them. Uh, that's before I learned how to cinch down my quilt properly. And there's a little few needles right there, just in case. Uh, big lighter. This is for sterilizing the, the needles and also just in case my um, uh, jet foil didn't self-start, which did happen once, so I have that, thankfully. This is a little magic oil to help with pain. A little KT tape. And a couple of little patches just in case I needed to patch my. Um, oh, it also has a band aid too. Some band aids in there. That was for um, <laughs> repair for myself and repair for my uh, sleeping pad or tent. I think that was it. Oh, I had a couple of. I had some laminated things in here. I had my, um, my campfire permit and my PCT long distance permit and a little spreadsheet about like how many uh, days of food to buy, et cetera, et cetera, um, for the entire trail, had I made it that far. Oh, and I also have a sleep aid in here. Sleep aid, that's all I want to think. <laughs> so I have my little jet boil. It's a micro mo, I think. Um, comes with, um, if you have the small fuel tank, it fits right in here too. It actually fits, 16 ounces of water, maybe a little hair more, and it's a self-starting. Um, it usually self-starts, but occasionally it does not. Um, it, it boiled the water so fast, and I was just, I know it's a little bit heavier than the, than the, uh, the small little stoves, but I love this thing so much. When it fails, I'm gonna, I have a BRS stove that I won from um, Mike Lawrence, so I'm gonna fiddle with that. I just need to buy a pot for it, though, uh, to make sure. Actually, I have a tank. I bought this in Julian because I needed a new one and they didn't have the small one. So unfortunately it's like extra space in here and it's huge. So I'll have this for quite some time. And, oops, that's not nice. This one's nice. Another stuff sack. This is my electronic stuff sack or dry sack. All my stuff sacks are dry sacks. And I had I have two banks in here. I started out with that, the solar powered one that, that just pooped out on me. Um, and I have the 13,000 milliamp from Anchor. And I have this old one, it's a 10,000 milliamp. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this 
is that it only has one charge port. I love this because I could charge two things at once. Um, I could charge my phone and then, because I have a couple of wires in here for a USB-C and a USB, um, like the Android USB, because um, I have two different plugs for many different items. So, but this was within the C. So if this failed, then I at least have this. And I'm glad I had this when the other one failed. Because then I would always had some kind of power ready. Um, that, this, this drive failed me. This was a drive I was gonna pull um, pictures and video off my phone. And when I actually used it, it didn't work. I was mad. I'm gonna fiddle with it a little bit more and, and see. It's probably too late to get my money back, but. A um, couple, couple of three wires for the uh, different things that I have to charge. Um, and my anchor uh, plug with a quick charge and, and another USB as well. This thing weighs a ton, but worth it. Yeah, it's fast. I added this when that other power bank failed because it had a, a light on it. And so I added this little rechargeable flashlight. Um, now it was only out once. Once a, you know, a couple of days after I added it, so I never really used it, but I probably would have. Next, this feels like this is my dry sack for my um, sleep layer. These are my cuddle beds. Bought the loudest print possible. These were actually getting too big for me that last week, but um, it has an adjustable thing like elastic band, so you can play with it a little bit. Um, that was my bottom layer. This was my uh, top layer. It's a medium merino wool long sleeve. Um, pretty good. But I generally would sleep with also with my puffy jacket on top of that. I need Brian's up. He'll probably come out here and wonder why I'm talking to myself. This was my balaclava that I wore. Um, and I wore it this is something they tried to, at it, Scout and Frodo's, they wanted me to get rid of. They're like, you won't need it this year. I'm like, trust me, I will need this because I need to keep my neck and my face and my head warm. And this takes care of all three. I used it every night. Every night. And then I had my extra pair of socks as well. And that's it for my sleep layer. Now, I was going to add um, a fleece layer to my top when I hit Kennedy Meadows. It was like a long sleeve marmot long sleeve something rather that I got from Yogi's uh, Outfitter Shop on clearance. It's so nice and warm, but never got to be used, so it's hanging up in the closet now. It'll get used eventually. I have a dry sack from um, Mountain Laurel Designs that I got to keep my quilt in. So it compresses it, but not as bad as like a compression sack would. And um, I won't pull out everything, but this is my, uh, my quilt some enlightened equipment. Um, Revelation rated down to 10 degrees, I believe. It's very warm and did its job beautifully on the trail. I definitely sold my sleep system, I will say that. But yeah, so this went sideways into my pack and it's malleable, so it, it bended. It, yeah. But this, for the most part, protected it from that rain that, rain that I hit in Warner Springs, but it's still, I think some got in because it was damp in some slots, but nothing like my puffy. Okay, what's next? Yeah, this all fits in my bag, and then I still have room. So it's a big bag. <laughs> okay, this is my big my big Agnes Axel insulated. It's a uh, regular size, lengthwise, but it's wide. It's 25 inches wide. Um, it is a few, like three more ounces, I believe, than um, the popular Neo Air therm uh, Yeah, the, the Neo Air, but. I have a, a, a hate relationship with that company <laughs> for many reasons. Um, my my Neo Air was faulty, and I tried to contact their customer service, and they just were not contacting me back. So I, I brought it to social media, and then they contacted me back and said, "Oh, we're we're behind like a month on our customer service orders." And I'm like, "Dude, if I was on trail, I'd be screwed." Hello, um, but they finally got back to me and said, "Hey, mail it in." So I did. And they found absolutely nothing wrong with it. I said, no, it's working as intended. There's no leak. And I'm like, then why is it deflating every two hours? Well, so I gave up on them. And I moved to this one, even hearing that this sleeps cold. Um, 
but oh my god, it was fantastic. Once I learned to cinch down my quilt properly around this, and then I also add that, that extra layer of warmth underneath with that uh, the Gossamer Thin Light Pad, um, I slept like a baby uh, with, oh, it's just awesome. For my pillow, I'll show you my pillow system in a second, but I can't say good enough things about this pad. It never deflated on me, ever. That was pretty good. This is my pump sack that I actually bought for that because it would take forever to inflate otherwise. It still took a while to inflate, but it's this sped things up a little bit. Um, this is my little journal that I kept. And I have a little space pen in there. It's worth the extra weight. This was hard to keep up with. Editing the videos were easier than writing this. Um, this just took longer. Um, it's down there somewhere. I'm getting down to the bottom. There we go. I have a, um, like one of those micro towels that they're quick drying also. I use this when I like rinse out my pot, my jet boil, or, or wipe down the excessive dampness of my, uh, my tent if it got a lot of moisture. Um, didn't use it too often, but I actually probably could have gone with a smaller one, but it's okay. If this is a small one, if there's, there's an extra small, it's probably better. Oh, well this doesn't count. I just happened to throw those in there when I thought I was going back to Section B right away. It's my micro spikes. This was not in my pack during the hike. <laughs> it was going to be the second part, but no. Uh, there we go. This is my my pillow. I actually bought one to match the Big Agnes. It's lighter than the, the, the Trekology pillow I think I had. And I use my buff as a pillowcase to keep it somewhat clean. Um, this wasn't enough. What I ended up doing was using my uh, stuff sack for my sleeping clothes, putting my hiking clothes in it, putting it under my neck, and then this right there, and then it was perfect. It also helped it not slide around, because it still will slide. The pillowcase helps with that, too. Oh, my glasses holder. I got irritated with these and just threw them in there and never touched them again. Probably could have gotten rid of those, but I should have been wearing them, especially on the ridgeline hikes. I do actually have one of these, too. It's a, one of those car emergency blankets. On the really cold nights, I would put this on the floor of my tent and make like a little bathtub of it and then put the thin light down and then put the, uh, the sleeping pad down. And it, I don't know how much warmth it adds, but it helps. I never got cold. I never got cold. But that's it. That's all that's in my pack. And oh yeah, well I told you about the poles earlier. <laughs> But wait, there is more. <laughs> Forgot to count this. I have a little compartment on the inside that has a zipper. And I totally forgot I have a couple items in there. I have a uh, compass for the maps, paper maps, if my electronics should fail me. And I have had a multi-tool, this little itty bitty, it's a Leatherman squirt. And I did use this a few times, so. But that's it. That's everything I have in my pack. And I haven't updated it for a while, but I will update the, um, my lighter pack page and put a link down below for it so you can see what all these things weigh. Um, and there you have it. A lot of people think I'm like, oh, you should lighten the load. I'm like, dude, I'm a 16 and a half pound base weight. Yeah, I'd love to get lighter, but there's certain things that I, 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 I want creature comfort wise that I'm not gonna give up. I don't wanna be miserable on the trail. Uh, so I, I but I, I think 16 and a half pounds is pretty good. Sure, I'd love to get down to 13 pounds. I just don't see that happening. Um, unless I actually, uh, let's say I replace the jet boil with the BRS. That would shave, that would shave quite a bit off, actually. Not a whole pound, but at least a half pound, if not more. But anyways, there you have it. What is in my pack? I carry all this stuff on the trail. Give away. So I showed you this earlier that I didn't use, but I actually, when I purchased it, it came in a two pack and I never opened this one. Um, it's a little sit pad, butt pad, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, uh, for my Q and A sessions, I like to do giveaways. So if you have a question for me and I use it, I'll, I'll uh, I use it like I answer it in the, my next video that I, well, my video that I do the Q and A for. Um, 
I will put you in a drawing. And it's a cat in the litter box, sorry. I'll put you in a drawing. <laughs> okay, it's covered. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. I'll put you in a drawing for it and mail it to you for free. Um, it's a, again, it's called the Jungle Leopard, a little sit pad, and it, it weighs like one, one ounce, if that. It, it's, it's really nice, but I'll, I'll give you the new one, clearly, even though the other one hasn't been used. This one hasn't even been opened. All right, that's all I have for you today. If you like what you saw, please click like. I know it's a long video, but I got a lot of stuff to show you. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already for future videos. There will be future videos. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, have a good one.